Welcome to our online worship service. Today we celebrate the second Sunday after the Epiphany. As always, we are grateful for your support and ask you to consider your contributions to Swamp Lutheran Church. You may use our online giving portal on our website or you may send your offerings directly to the church office. We're also trying to reorganize our prayer chain and so if you have a prayer request, please call the church office and we will notify our prayer chain members uh, to pray for you. We begin our worship today singing our first hymn, Here I Am, Lord. <laughs> be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the third chapter of 1 Samuel. At a time when visions are rare and unexpected, the Lord comes to Samuel and calls him to speak the divine word. Though just a boy, Samuel responds to God obediently, as Eli the priest has taught him to respond. This marks the beginning of Samuel's prophetic ministry. The reading. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. 
At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Sam, lie down again. As he went and lay down, the Lord called him again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling to the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, Here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. God. The second reading is from the sixth chapter of 1 Corinthians. Paul helps the Corinthians understand that God has claimed the entirety of their lives through the death of Christ. Hence, Christian relationships and conduct, including areas of human sexuality, are to reflect the reality that we belong to Christ and that the Holy Spirit lives within us. St. Paul writes, All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food. And God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall become one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, 
but the fornicator commits sin against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. In John's Gospel, Jesus' ministry begins with the call of the disciples, who then bring others to Jesus. Philip's friend, Nathaniel, moves from skepticism to faith when he, expects, when he accepts the invitation to come and see. The Gospel, the next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Grace to you and peace, my sisters and brothers in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Jesus takes the long view. Too often, we take the short view. This thought is prompted by our gospel reading we just heard. But I believe it applies to lots of different areas. The setting is the beginning of Jesus' ministry, according to John's gospel. He's already been baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. And now Jesus is beginning to assemble his inner circle of disciples. First Andrew, and then Peter. And now today we hear about Philip and Nathaniel. Jesus will need these disciples to carry on his ministry long after he's been crucified and resurrected. Jesus is taking the long view. He's making plans that will live on long into the future. The fact that we are here today, 2,000 years later, is testimony that his view is very long indeed. Nathaniel's response is telling. At first, he objects to Philip's invitation finding Jesus' home to be offensive. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? He replies derisively. Already the short view is at play. Nathaniel is captive to his own prejudice. Applying qualities to an individual based on false preconceived attitudes towards a group is the very definition prejudice. Prejudice is always short-sighted. It closes us off to the gifts of others. It can be a barrier to our own discipleship of Jesus. Jesus sees something in Nathaniel that Nathaniel himself cannot. Here is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit, Jesus says. Here again, Jesus takes the long view concerning Nathanael. It's not that Nathanael is perfect. 
but he will follow Jesus and become his witness after the resurrection. Now, most believe that Nathaniel is the same as the disciple or apostle Bartholomew mentioned in other Gospels. He is said to have taken the Gospel to India, and he was also martyred by being skinned alive. Jesus tells Nathaniel he saw him sitting under a fig tree. Now, it's a significant little detail because the fig tree is a symbol for studying the Torah, the scriptures of Israel. Philip has already told Nathanael that Jesus fulfills the expectations for the coming of Messiah found in the Law of Moses and the Prophets. Nathanael himself is a student of scripture. When Jesus points out this to Nathanael, he comes to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the King of Israel, the Son of God. Jesus sees us in much the same way. When Jesus looks at us, he always takes the long view. He doesn't get hung up on our shortcomings or our short-sighted views of ourselves. To Jesus, we are not the sum total of our good deeds and our bad deeds. He doesn't weigh the balance and see where the bottom line is. He sees us from the future which he inhabits, a future into which he calls us, nothing less than God's fulfillment of all there is. And that's as long a view as anyone can take. Too often we get hung up on the short view. We fail to see ourselves as God sees us, as beloved, simply because. And if this is true for ourselves, it's also true for the world that we create for ourselves. We see the world from a short-sighted point of view. We look at it from the perspective of limits and threats and barriers. We're too often quick to judge the actions of others and then judge their worth as human beings. We are like Nathaniel, assigning no worth to Jesus simply because he came from Nazareth. Today we can substitute black or white, Jew or Christian, Democrat or Republican, Trump supporter or Biden supporter to our list of short-sighted prejudices. And when we devalue a person because we disagree with their religion or their politics, we're taking a very short view indeed. Jesus calls us to see others and the world from his perspective, which is the view from his future, a future in which humanity is reconciled to God and to each other. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that politics is bad. Politics is the way in which a community wrestles with the idea of what kind of community it's going to be and how it's going to get there. These are important decisions. But we're in a period in which it seems that the ideas are more important than the persons themselves. It may sound overly simplistic, and possibly it is. But to me, too many people are too quick to devalue a person they associate with a particular political position that they disdain. I believe that Jesus calls us to a better way of living. Jesus calls us to see each other from his long view. To Jesus, each person is beloved. Each person is either a disciple or a potential disciple, either called to follow or yet to be called to follow, either already in the kingdom or moving towards the kingdom. This doesn't mean we won't have disagreements. We will. Even inside the church, we'll sometimes disagree. Yet the cross of Jesus Christ shows us that all people, whether they are from Nazareth 
or Denver, blue or red, gay or straight, are precious and beloved by God. Let us see others as Jesus sees you and me, imperfect yet loved, flawed yet always forgiven. Amen. In the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Living in the growing light of Christ, let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all those in need. We pray for the Church of Christ, called by God to bear witness to the light of Jesus throughout the world. Bless ministries which invite others to come and see the salvation Jesus brings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer from violence and war, from famine and hunger, from oppression and exploitation. Grant courage to those who struggle for freedom, food to those who are hungry, and hope to all who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation during this time of transition and leadership. We pray for our President Donald and Vice President Michael, for President-elect Joseph and President-elect Kamala. We pray for those newly installed in our Congress and legislatures. Grant them wisdom to serve this people. Prosper the labor of all who work for justice, peace, and tranquility. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who struggle with illnesses of body, mind, or spirit. Send healing upon them. We pray for those who are infected with the coronavirus and for their families. Visit them in their isolation with the presence of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for all who were called by you to serve you on earth, but now rest in you. We thank you especially for the life of Martin Luther King Jr., who we remember this week. May his dream come to fruition in which we all see in one another a common humanity beloved by you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing our final hymn, This Little Light of Mine.
sharing the good news of Christ in word and deed. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.